Good morning, everyone. We come together this Tuesday morning and we resume Psalm 25, Psalm of David. Um, this morning we're going to be looking at and focusing on verses 12 through 15. But, you know, verses 12 through 15 make up the larger unit, a more complete unit thematically when we look at verses 8 through 15. So I want to read them all together. Um, so verses 8 and 9. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore He instructs sinners in His ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them His way. And then yesterday we looked at 10 and 11. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of His covenant. For the sake of Your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. And then today, Tuesday, we look at 12 through 15. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear Him. He makes His covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only He will release my feet from the snare. And then we end there today, and then we begin our reflection. Well, this morning, uh, we begin... In verse 2, 2a, with a question. Who then are those who fear the Lord? Well, before we answer the question as we look within the context, uh, we first must understand the word fear. How is fear used here? Well, fear here within the context of Psalm 25 is filial fear. F-I-L-I-A-L, filial fear. This is fear that is produced in one's heart by love, such as love that a son or daughter has for a father or a mother. So here, this is not fear that is produced by punishment or fear of punishment. It is filial fear, a fear out of love, reverence, and awe. Well, again, verse 12, as we continue our reflection, who then are those who fear the Lord? Well, well, of course, as I always have said and will say, until my dying breath, context. Context is key. Who then are those who fear the Lord? Well, as we look back through the context of 25 Watt, we have looked at so far. Those that fear the Lord are the ones who understand and experience God's loving, merciful, and faithful forgiveness. It's those who keep the demands of the covenant. It's those who accept and apply God's instruction and teaching. Those that filially, say that three times fast, those that filially fear the Lord are humble and hopeful. What does the psalmist say about them? Once we answered the question within context, who fears the Lord? What does the psalmist say about them? He said, verse 12b, and continuing, that he, God, will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, or rather, in pleasantness or contentment, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in, counsels those who filially fear him. He, the Lord, makes his covenant known or clear to them. Then the psalmist, within the context, the psalmist made two statements. The first statement was a statement of his commitment. The psalmist said, My eyes are ever on the Lord. The second statement was a statement about God's faithfulness to forgive. For only He will release my feet from the snare, the entanglements of sin. Now, you know, there's a lot in here that we could talk about. There, there's a lot in here that I could highlight that we could reflect on. But I only want to draw your attention to one thing, back to one thing. The first statement that the psalmist made in verse 15a, his statement was a statement of commitment. The psalmist said, my eyes are ever on the Lord. Now, you know, I could encourage you to not take your eyes off of Jesus like Peter did when he stepped out of the boat and began to walk to Jesus on the water. 
What happened to Peter when he took his eyes off of Jesus? <laughs> he began to sink like a rock. I'm not going to do that, even though I just did. But what I do want to challenge you with, what I want to encourage you with is this. Colossians 3, 2 and 3. Listen to the Word of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things below. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ Jesus in God. So your challenge is this. My challenge is this. Our encouragement is this. No matter what life throws at you, no matter what life throws at us, the circumstances of your life, the circumstances of our lives, set our eyes not here, but there. Set our eyes above, not below. Take your eyes off of your circumstance. Those things that you deem, that you see, understand as bad for our good, but take your eyes off of the circumstance and look above. Look at Him. Jesus, who in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the author and perfecter, finisher of our faith. These circumstances, these life things God is using to, to grow our faith, to, to stretch our faith like a rubber band. And if you stretch a rubber band long enough, what happens? That, that rubber band, the elect, the, it, whatever the word is, it stretches out further. The, elast the elasticity of that rubber band stretches further and further than it's stretched out. God is stretching us. He is breaking us down and remaking us into the image of Jesus Christ in His character, in His action. Author and finisher, completer of our faith. Take your eyes off of this. Put your eyes on that. Put your eyes on Jesus. He will never fail you. Never. Never. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our encouragement that we have received today from your word. Thank you that you give us the strength, you give us the biblical, spiritual cogn cognition that we need to take our eyes off of the here and now and look to that. Look to you, the author and finisher. Thank you for loving us so much that you just don't save us from hell. You don't just save us, forgive us from our sins, Lord. You stay with us. You stick to us. You stick with us and you expand us. You grow us. You mature us. Thank you for loving us so much. Lord, in these trying times, help us as your children to not waller in the here and now. Help us to be excited. Help us to be fruitful. Help us to be mature as we move in and through it, in and through life, being prepared for glory. Thank you for loving us so much. Use us today. No matter how small, use us for your honor, for your glory, and for our good. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Well, I hope that you're challenged and encouraged by this morning's devotional. I hope that you're continuing to be safe in the storm. Uh, Hurricane Sally is, is beginning. I'm, I'm recording this Tuesday, uh, Monday night for Tuesday morning. So the rain has just started outside. I just heard it blow over and the rain is, is pretty hard. Um, but it's subsided right now. It's kind of stopped. But we know that that's going to be probably all night, on and off, on and off, on and off. But just continue to pray for Louisiana uh, during this time. It's coming off of, right off the hills of Hurricane Laura. I understand from listening to the weather alerts today that there are three or four more systems developing out. And, and um, who knows where they're going to land or if they will develop into anything more serious. But you know... Here in Louisiana, we are in um, hurricane season. Our hurricane season won't end until November. Uh, but we know, we know in our hearts um, 
sometimes it's hard to, to convince our minds, but we know in our hearts that God's in control of it all. Even those things that we see and understand or deem as bad, He's still in control. And we trust Him. Either we trust Him or we don't, you know? Either we trust Him or we don't. Walk the talk. I love y'all. Y'all have a great and safe Tuesday. And continue to be on the lookout for uh, any updates for Wednesday evening. We are planning on having an open forum conversation, an IBC family open forum this coming Wednesday at 6 in the sanctuary. Unless the weather uh, doesn't subside, unless there's still danger of flash flooding, we will not have it. So um, I'll just be joining you online for Wednesday night Bible study. Well, I love y'all, and I hope again that y'all have a safe day today and uh, riding, riding out this storm. If you need anything, give me a call, give your deacon a call, and we'll do our very best to, to come and assist you and help you in any way possible. Love you.